perhaps you can tell us a bit about your story and your journey. And you know, I know you you you, you run your own business these days, but um, perhaps you can tell us about that. And you know, tell us about how you went from zero to to hero um, where you are at the moment. Definitely studying for JNCIEs, and and I have a number of other certifications as well. But that 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 took literally years of my life to it to accomplish. Uh, I mean, I think it's kind of like equivalent to maybe so, somebody studying for a bar exam. That says you've been here since 6.30. I thought I'd jumpstart the bar exam work. Or something along those lines. But uh, I basically, where do you, where should I begin? <laughs> you want me to start at the very beginning? Yeah, I mean, uh, give us inspiration because I mean, I, I, I saw you got NT4 years and years ago and then you were Novell before right. that. Tell us a little bit about no, the journey. Yeah, so um, yeah, let, I, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my story and how I got into IT and I, I definitely took a more non-traditional path. Um, Which is where, great to hear. Yeah. Um, I, I was working as an electrician out, out of high school, but I had always been really good with computers. I ran bulletin board systems um, in the late 80s, early 90s when I was a teenager out of the home, uh, much to my parents' chagrin because these were mostly like freaking hacking type related bulletin board systems that I was running back then. Uh, but it definitely gave me sort of a leg up on learning computers, learning programming skills, um, you know, and then like what I was really interested in, I was always interested in was the communications aspect. You know, I was dialing BBSs uh, in 1998 that were in Paris using uh, hacked PBXs and things of that nature. So I always knew I liked that field. I loved communications and, and networking in general. Uh, but out of high school, I was doing a little bit of school. I was doing some some college, but I was also working as an electrician, um, as an electrician's apprentice. And I remember one day, just I was working really, you know, hard manual labor, running cable through ceilings, and I just said, you know, why am I doing this? Like, I I could exactly. be, you know, I'm really into computers. This was uh, around ninety four, ninety five, and you know, the whole thing was just really starting to to pick up. So. I just decided to go to a computer school um, and I did some college, but I basically took a non-traditional path where I, I once I started making money in the industry, I was like, I, I don't really need to finish and, and get the college degree. I just started pursuing some certifications. I got my CNE uh, three and then CNE four. So my first introduction to networking was with Novell. Basically, as soon as I got my CNE at that point in time, Microsoft really came onto the scene and it was almost like I just spent a year and a half studying for all this Novell stuff and it was almost out of date by the time I got it because everybody was asking for NT certifications. So I started pursuing my MCSE and um, got a number of different Microsoft certifications and that was really cool. I was doing server side, you know, uh, Active Directory, Microsoft Exchange, you know, SQL Server, that kind of stuff. But in the back of my mind, I always really, really loved networking. And, you know, Cisco was out there and I would go to on the job sites and I'd see like a Cisco router and I'd be like, wow, that is just the coolest thing. That is what I really want to be doing. Uh, but it was it was hard to break in, you know, to go from the server side uh, and then, you know, to make that transition over to the networking side was pretty tough. I, I basically started reading like Cisco press books back then, you know, just learning as much about networking as I could. Naturally, I already had some TCP IP background. Um, and then, you know, during my studies of MCSE and also CNE, I had some some networking background, but I really needed to learn like the routing piece. And I just started learning that by reading Cisco press books and basically being a sponge to anything that I could get my hands on. And I was lucky. Um, not everybody has this this uh, you know good fortune, but I managed to talk to a guy who gave me um, really my first job in the networking industry. It was at a, a really little company. Maybe you guys might have heard of. It. It's called UUNet uh, back in the day. But this guy, um, his name's Atik Ahmad. He you know took me under his wing and, and gave me my very first networking job, and I will forever be. Um, indebted and thankful to him for taking uh, a chance on me. But it was rough. I mean, it was rough because I got into this uh, industry and the networking side and I was pretty green. And I'm working at UUNet, which at the time, AS701 was the largest service provider in the world. They were the backbone, you know, now and now they, they are part of Verizon, um, that, that AS. So AS701, AS702 and AS703 were originally UUNet. And I'm jumping in with some pretty sharp, talented people 
people that had PhDs, people that had master de- master's degrees, people that had been working in networking for some time, you know, maybe they had been working with X25 or Frame Relay and, you know, I'm jumping in, learning ATM on the fly and MPLS and those types of things. But it was basically sucking it through a fire hose as far as like learning and trying to keep up uh, with these folks. But I mean, I, mean I'm, I love what you've said because I mean, I, I've written down a few notes, but it, like, let's start with that one. You know, when we when you start out like with networking or any new tech, it just seems so overwhelming. So, I mean, you've walked this road. So can you, whenever we, like when we talk, can you always like pitch it to someone perhaps who's who's either young and I get some pushback on my channel about that. I don't want to just look at someone who's young, but someone who's transitioning because a lot of people who watch this are perhaps like electricians Mm or uh, bus drivers or work in McDonald's and they're trying to get into networking or like get into IT. So always phrase it that way. So do you have, uh, uh, imposter syndrome is a big problem a lot of people face. Like I could never learn this. It's overwhelming. So what's your advice? Because I mean, you've went from like, I'm working with a PhD. I'm not good enough to like five JNCIEs. To, to kind of describe the path and why I ended up pursuing so many certifications. Now, at the end of the day, I just want to say, I don't necessarily think certifications are the bar that illustrate whether or not you actually know a technology. I know plenty of people that are certification on paper only, uh, but they don't really have the skills to back it up. So I'm not necessarily advocating just taking certifications for certification's sake, but in my case, it's... Um, it's a, it's a way to have like a structured learning path. As I'm learning the material, I can go and take a certification and sort of test my knowledge. Um, and it's just a, a way to reinforce, um, you know, what, I, what I've learned. Now, the reason I pursued so many, you know, we talked about CNE, there was MCSE, there's CISSP, there's Juniper certs, I have Cisco certs, I have a whole bunch, VMware, you name it. I, I think that that whole imposter syndrome that I faced on my early days at uh, UUNet, and I mean, there were days that I just wanted to go home and cry. I would ask, <laughs> I would ask, you know, you know, I'm working on, on maybe testing ATM or something, and I'd go to one of my colleagues and ask them, hey, what do these little symbols mean? You know, and it turns out it's like the symbols for, you know, microsecond or nanosecond. And, and they're literally like saying to me, I'm not, I'm not even kidding saying you call yourself an engineer. How, how can you, oh, wow. how can you call yourself an engineer? And you don't, you don't know these things or like the Lambda symbol. I started doing a lot of work with, uh, with uh, w, DWDM in those days. And, you know, first time I'm seeing some of these symbols like Lambda. So yeah, people were basically making, you know, treating me like a redheaded stepchild in that workplace, making me feel pretty bad. I, I wow, literally, I bad. had a bo- I had a boss that he, he said to me, you know, I don't understand how you can call yourself an engineer. Um, and I, I literally went home crying that day, but it pushed me and it motivated me. Um, and I just started reading as many books as I could. So uh, got my hand on as many Cisco press books as I could. You know, I was working with protocols. So, I mean, I'm getting a book on ISIS. I'm getting a book on BGP. I'm getting a book on OSPF. I'm literally reading the RFCs. Um, I just made it a goal of mine to prove these people wrong. Um, Love it. and Love it. you know, within it's, it's kind of funny because the same people that, you know, that there were times where I would be asking for help and, and they just kind of just didn't want to deal with me. So I realized I, ha- I had to kind of like pull myself up by my own bootstraps. Um, but the funny thing is, you know, I, I immersed myself in it. And about a year later, the same people that were laughing at me saying, how do you call yourself an engineer uh, that didn't really want anything to do? All of a sudden they're coming and they're asking me questions or, hey, do you, can I borrow that book? Uh, hey, do well you know done. how this works? Do you know how this works in, in ISIS? And Yep. Well so, and, and they're wanting to work on projects with me and things like that. So it was a really a sense of vindication, I think. Um, but yeah, I in it. my yep. case, yep. I, I the imposter syndrome has very much been a part of my desire to not 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 necessarily prove to other people, but prove to myself. Um, and I mean, I still I think we all suffer from that to a certain extent. Uh, you know, I've got five JNCIEs, but there are so many times that I'm working with people and I just think, man, this guy is just so brilliant. Um, I, I'm constantly learning from other people. I love that. I mean, it's like the, the kind of people you always want to work with, uh, I think, are people who are humble, who know that the more you know, the more you realize there's more to know and you can't know everything. 
So, I mean, it, it, you're the kind of guy that you want in your team, not someone who's arrogant, who thinks they know everything. But you've got to tell us, the, the, the JNCIEs, what, have you, what are they in? Because I would assume it's writing and switching, but then perhaps some others as well, right? Yeah. So it's it's actually a little bit different than um, than like maybe like the Cisco track. So the, yep. there's five or there's four now. There was a fifth. I'll talk about that one. Uh, but there's service provider. Okay. Yep. So SP, JNCIE, SP, there's ENT, which is enterprise. Yep. Uh, there's SEC, which is security. And then there's DC, which is data center. And there used to be a dash cloud, which was more around their cloud products, Contrail, and those types of things. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of overlap, right? You're, you're, you're learning, you're doing routing and switching in many of these tracks, but the focus is a little bit different. It's like, is this applicable to like a data center environment where you might be doing like VXLAN, you're doing EVPN versus say, you know, an enterprise where you're probably doing more like spanning tree, you're doing VLANs, you're doing, um, you know, VoIP and telephony and those types of things. So it's just kind of the focus area is a little bit different depending on the track. I, I love it. I mean, one of the things I love about certs is I always like to say you don't know what you don't know. The certs help you do things that are out of your comfort zone. I think if it's like if you're just in one environment, you might get a bit like stale because you're just used to working on certain protocols and now you're forced to learn a whole bunch of other stuff, right? It was so much fun for me going through these journeys um, of, you know, um, you know, the first one that I took took about two years, the service rider track. At the time, it was called, um, it was the JNCIE-M. That's what, what it was called is now the service rider. And this was based on their M series, their flagship product, um, which eventually this evolved to the service rider track. But that one took me several years. And in fact, uh, here's just a little bit of advice for some of your viewers. Um, I had been working with Juno since 1998. And I didn't actually pursue my first JNCIE until about 2007. So that was like nine years or something like that had gone by yeah. um, before I decided to actually pursue my first JNCIE. And the reason for that, because I felt like I needed to l learn more about networking. I just felt like I wasn't ready. Um, you know, so it's like I'm reading one more book on this protocol. I'm learning and basically, I went in and took the test and I passed on my first try and I realized I w had been ready way, I mean, I, I way overdid it. So my advice to anybody that may be interested in pursuing like one of these expert level certifications is, is if you've got maybe a couple of years of experience under your belt, you're probably more than ready to just do like a focus preparation and study the actual materials that are going to be on the exam. But you know, my advice is you don't need to wait nine years like I did. Um, so I, then I just started knocking them out at that point because I was like, hey, man, this is way easier than I thought it would. I think, I mean, it's tough, hey, because I mean, some people who study for these uh, these like expert level certs, they fail and it's going to be a long, hard journey. And I mean, they would just say you're a genius. That's why it's easy for you, right? I don't. I, I think I just had, but at that, at that point, I had had so much stick time working on the CLI yeah. with Junos yeah. that, you know, nine years, it was like secondhand nature for me. And of course, I was working at UUNet in a service rider environment. So I was working with MPLS. I was working with traffic engineering. I was working with class of service, multicast, all those types of things on pretty much a regular basis. So if you are in an environment where you're getting, you're not just studying for it on your free time, but you're actually doing this in your day-to-day -day job, then you're going to be better positioned to to pass an exam like that. So, I mean, I feel bad because I, I knew I know there's there's a lot of people that it takes them two, three, four times to pass. Um, but I think at that point, I just had had like ample experience behind me.